What's up ladies and gentlemen, Wolfcryer here with another build guide for patch 2.6.6 season 18 in Diablo 3. And in this video we are going to be talking about two different speed farming versions of Sun Wuko's Wave of Light, one of which can transition quite nicely into a Greater Rift pushing build. Now these two variations, one is for Nephilim speed farming, for gathering those Greater Rift Keystones, as well as a plethora of death Deathsbreaths. And the other version will be great for leveling up low-level Augment Gems, as well as farming Legendaries as you speed through Greater Rifts. So, let's jump right into it. And for both builds, we are going to be running five pieces of the Sun Wukos Monkey King's Garb set, as well as the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube. And this is going to give you 50% damage reduction while Sweeping Wind is active, and you're going to want that active at all times, because the 6B set bonus gives your Wave of Light 1500% increased damage for every stack of Sweeping Wind you have. And for Nephilim Rifts, we are going to combine this with two pieces of the Sages set, which is going to double the amount of Death's Breath that drop off of Elite Packs, which means at T16, you are guaranteed at least 6 DBs. And with the addition of the Sage's Belt, that now also means that we can choose to run with Sokrin's Gaze for our helmet instead of needing to equip that Sun Wuko's helm and teleporting all over the place and putting ourselves in harm's way while we're farming. We can now equip Sokrin's Gaze which allows our wave of light to be cast at our enemies. Plus it gives a nice little bump in damage to wave of light, so very awesome helm to have. And then we're gonna be running Pinto's Pride for our bracers, and this is going to increase the damage of wave of light by up to 150% and slow enemies for 80% for three seconds. Now in your ring slots, if you need defense, definitely drop on a Unity, onto you and your follower and make sure your follower has the relic equip that allows him not to die. This is going to split damage between you and your follower, so effectively becomes a 50% damage reduction. Then you can run Convention of Elements, which is going to rotate through all of the elements, and when you land on the fire element, you are going to be dealing up to 200% increased damage. Now, this is where the builds can start to vary a little bit, depending on your tastes, how much damage you can withstand, and how you are progressing through the rifts, because you can drop one of these rings, Wear the Ring of Royal Grandeur and throw either the Flavor of Time into your cube for double the pylon duration or even Squirt's Necklace for a huge damage increase. So the build definitely has some leeway when it comes to rings. You could also even wear Avarice Band with Boon of the Hoarder if you're looking to get gold and that sort of thing. But all of these versions are pretty fast. My quickest run with this build so far has been under 1 minute and 30 seconds with an average of 1 minute and 45 seconds for the Sages version in a GR75 which is equivalent to T16. For your weapons you are going to want a 7 stack Vengeful Wind which is going to increase your maximum stack count for Sweeping Wind and you definitely want this to be 7 because that is 1500% increased damage that you're leaving off the table if you get one with six increased stacks. Then we're going to be running in Guillaume, which is going to allow our skill cooldowns to be reduced by up to 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. So you are pretty much just going to be bouncing from elite pack to elite pack, grabbing your DBs, and then grabbing your keystone and getting out of the rift and restarting and doing it all over again. In Guillaume is going to make you be able to dash around the rift very quickly and gather up all your materials. Over in the cube, we are looking at Incense Torch of the Grand Temple in the weapon slot, which is going to reduce the spirit cost of Wave of Light by 50% and increase its damage by 500%. And in the armor slot, we are looking at Nemesis Bracers, which allows shrines and pylons to spawn an enemy champion, which is going to give you even more DBs. Then as we discussed, the Ring of Royal Grandeur is going to be cubed if you are running it this way. 
Like I said, you can mix and match the jewelry with this build. Do you need more damage mitigation? Do you need more damage? Is one piece of gear, one jewelry slot item substantially better than the other? It is all pretty much up to you and your play style. So I would suggest finding out what works best for you. Now for gems, I am running Bane of the Trapped, which is going to increase your damage against enemies under control impairing effects. And at 25, it becomes a control impairing effect. So this is going to boost your damage quite substantially. And then I can run Zay's now, which you could not do with the previous iteration of the Sage's Speed Farming Wave of Light build, because now you can cast your Wave of Light off in the distance, which allows you to deal more damage the further away you are from the enemies. And that third gem is pretty much also all up to you. Do you want Boon of the Hoarder for some more gold drops? Do you want to run Bane of the Powerful for increased damage against elite packs? and reduce damage taken, or maybe another gem that you can let me know down in that comment section down below. Perhaps even Gogok of Swiftness to increase your cooldown reduction and your attack speed. I'd say the third gem depends on what you want to do with this build. Now one thing you'll notice with this build is I am not running Kayashiro Soul, which does mean that you have to keep an eye on your sweeping wind and not let your stacks fall off. This is not super hard to do. You just make sure that you are attacking enemies. And if there are no enemies in the area, you want to make sure that you cast sweeping wind right before your stacks fall off and just maintain that buff. Now for the Greater Rift farming version, you are pretty much just going to drop off your Sages set and put on your Captain Crimson's trimmings. This is going to allow you to gain 20% cooldown reduction and 20% resource cost reduction and give you a nice bump in damage and damage mitigation, which is going to help you out greatly. You're still going to wear all the same the rest of the gear. Probably not going to want to wear a Boon of the Hoarder as nothing drops gold in Greater Rifts. So I would personally either throw on a Bane of the Powerful or something like Gogok of Swiftness. And this version can easily transition into a Greater Rift pushing build simply by replacing your Ingeome with a Kyoshiro's, which is going to increase the damage of your Wave of Light by 150%, and if it hits less than three enemies, it is going to increase it by up to an additional 250%. Now, I personally have run this build in Greater Rifts and was able to clear a GR-105 in about 10 and a half minutes, and once again, I do not have the best of gear, no augments on my gear for the most part. I think I have three augments all together. So it is definitely capable of somewhere in the 110 plus range. So keep that in mind that this can easily transition into taking you further in your greater rift progression. Now let's talk about the skills. First up, we have Mystic Ally, Air Ally. This is going to give you some spirit regen. It's not going to give you as much as when you are wearing crudest boots, which we are throwing off the build for this, but it will still give you four spirit regen a second and has an active that replenishes a hundred spirit. So it is pretty useful when you're running low on spirit and you want to keep your damage going to pop this and replenish that spirit. So I would still keep it on your bar. Next up, we have Sweeping Wind Inner Storm. Sweeping Wind needs to stay active at all times in order to deal your damage. If this is not active, you are pretty much nullified in the damage department. The reason we run Inner Storm is for more spirit regen. You get eight spirit per second while running Inner Storm. And while this is active, don't forget, you also get 50% additional damage mitigation. Then I personally run with Epiphany Desert Shroud, as this is going to increase your spirit regen, as well as allowing you to take 50% less damage. And with the Greater Rift version, you are going to have a ton of cooldown, so this is going to be up quite a bit. Then we have Dashing Strike Blinding Speed, which is going to give you 40% increased dodge chance for four seconds every time you use Dashing Strike. And this combined with Ingeome is what's going to allow us to dash through the rift, seek out those elite packs, kill them, and move on to the next one. And now we have the bread and butter of the build, Wave of Light Explosive Light. 
This is going to be your damage dealing skill. And thanks to the Socrin's Gaze, you are able to fire this off at distance and pretty much just eliminate everything on the screen before you even reach it. And we follow Wave of Light up with Mantra of Salvation Agility. This is going to give you some increased resistances to elements as well as 35 percent increased dodge chance now if you are not struggling to stay alive it is possible to switch this off to mantra of conviction annihilation which is going to give you a nice big 30 percent increased movement speed for three seconds when you kill an enemy that is affected by this mantra so a nice little speed boost to go through the rifts now as far as your passives go i'm running with exalted soul for the four spirit regen per second, simply because the loss of crudest boots is pretty much nerfing your mystic ally. So you're gonna need that spirit regen. I also run with Beacon of Yitar for the 20% reduced cooldowns. Harmony for that 40% of your single elemental resistance from items instead increases your resist all. Now this is only useful if the majority of your gear has a secondary resistance. If the majority of your gear does not and has all resistance instead, you're probably gonna wanna go with something like Guardian's Path or possibly even Resolve or Near Death Experience. And the last one I go for is Chant of Resonance, which is also going to give you four spirit every second. And the spirit costs of your mantras are reduced by 50%. This is a very spirit heavy build and since you are not running crudest boots you you struggle with spirit a little bit but not enough to slow you down. I didn't run into any problems while speed farming with this build so overall it's just very very fast. Both in greater rifts and nephilim rifts you can do under two minute runs and it's one of the fastest if not the fastest speed farmer out there. So this is probably one of the builds that I will be running in Season 18 for my farming builds because it's just exceptionally fast. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my speed farming Sun Wukos Sages and Sun Wukos Crimson Wave of Light builds for Season 18. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I always greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know down in that comment section down below what you thought of this build, what you think should be added or taken away, because this is a build guide. I want to hear from you guys your thoughts on how you can make this better or what you like about the build overall. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so very much, and you all have a fantastic day. Peace.